So you see, what you're eating is not technically yogurt because it doesn't have enough live acidophilus cultures. It's really just ice milk with carrageenan added for thickness. Oh, that's very interesting. <laughs> So you see, what you're eating is not technically yogurt because it doesn't have enough live acidophilus cultures. It's really just ice milk with carrageenan added for thickness. Oh, that's very interesting. <laughs> it's also not pink and has no berries. Mm. <laughs> yeah, but it doesn't really answer my question. What was your question again? Do you want some? Uh, <laughs> right, no. I'm lactose intolerant. Right. So gas. Yeah, got it. <laughs> well, good night. What are you doing? There's a draft. I don't feel a draft. Why don't we just go into uh, your... Oh, yeah. You know what, maybe we should slow things down a little. No, no, I didn't mean to go into your apartment to go fast. No, I know. <laughs> I, I know what you meant, it's just... This is only our first date. Yeah, okay, sure, no problem. Why don't we just figure out where we're going and when we want to get there, and then rate of speed equals distance over time. <laughs> Solve for R. Or we could just wing it. That might work, too. <laughs> Good night, Leonard. Good night. He's coming, screen saver. Hey, Leonard, how was your date? Bite me. Sheldon, how could you just sit there and let them spy on me? They were clever, Leonard. They exploited my complete lack of interest in what you were doing. <laughs> you should thank us. When future generations try to determine why your relationship with Penny crashed and burned, this right here is the black box. <laughs> What are you talking about? The date went fine. Dude, she said she wants to slow things down. Okay, so she said she wants to slow things down. It's like saying, I'm really enjoying this meal. I'm going to slow down and savor it. No, it's like this fish tastes bad, so... I'm gonna slow down and spit it out. You being the fish. I'm not the fish. Oh, really? Did you make a second date? Well, no, we sort of decided to wing it. Oh, even I know that's lame. <laughs> okay, all right, let's assume your hypothesis. We went to dinner, we talked, we laughed, we kissed. Where could I have possibly gone wrong? Think back, Leonard. The littlest things can set women off. Like, hey, the waitress is hot. I bet we could get her to come home with us. <laughs> or how much does your mom weigh? I want to know what I'm getting into. I didn't say anything like that. Good, because they don't work. <laughs> They also don't care for it if you stare at them and hyperventilate. Sadly, that's my home run swing. Look, everything went fine. I didn't even have to refer to my impromptu conversation starters. A woman across the hall is into me. Let's go to the tape. <laughs> Look at her reaction to the goodnight kiss. No change in respiration, pupils undilated, no flushing of the chest. Nice close-up, by the way. Interesting, her jaws are clenched, no tongue access. Clearly a bad sign amongst mating humans. That's not a bad sign, please. You might as well have been two iguana with no dewlap enlargement. And the worst sign of all is you're here and not there. I'm not there because I'm taking things slow. Which, by the way, compared to you guys, approaches warp speed. And take down that camera. He was a lot more fun when he had no hope. Give him time. Worst Renaissance Fair ever. Please let it go, Sheldon. It was rife with historical inaccuracies. For example, the tavern girl serving flagons of mead. Now, her costume was obviously Germanic, but in 1487, the Bavarian purity laws, or Reinheitsgebot, severely limited the availability of mead. At best, they would have had some sort of spiced wine. You're nitpicking. Oh, 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 really? Well, here's another nit for you. The flagons would not have been made of polypropylene.
Renaissance fairs aren't about historical accuracy. They're about taking chubby girls who work at Kinko's and lacing them up in corsets so tight their bosom jumps out and says, howdy. Bosoms would not have said howdy in the 15th century. If anything, they would have said huzzah. I don't care what the bosoms say, Sheldon. I just want to be part of the conversation. Hi, guys. Looks like you've been to the Renaissance fair, I'm hoping. Renaissance fair? More of a medieval slash age of enlightenment slash any excuse to wear a codpiece fair. Okay, fine, whatever. Um, you guys, this is my friend Eric. Hello. Hi. Hey. So, yeah, good to see you. Yeah, yeah, it's good to see you, too. We should probably go. Yeah. Bye, guys. Like your hat. <laughs> Thanks, my mom made it. Penny with a new guy, Trey Awkward. It wasn't awkward. It wasn't fun. Besides, what's the big deal? We dated, we, we stopped dating, and now we're both moving on. By moving on, do you mean she's going out with other men and you spend the afternoon making 15th century soap with Wolowitz? That was not 15th century soap. My God, those people need to learn. You can't just put ye old in front of anything you want and expect to get away with it. Can I please just go in? My chain mail's stuck in my underwear. You're wearing modern underwear? Relatively modern. Why, what are you wearing? I fashioned historically accurate undergarments out of linen. You went out and bought linen? Don't be silly. I borrowed one of your pillowcases. Borrowed? Fellow warriors. This is Sheldor the Conqueror. We are about to enter Axel's fortress. Now, this is a long run, so let's do another bladder check. All right, Barry, we'll wait for you again, but you really should see a doctor. Sheldor is AFK. Benny, are you experiencing some sort of difficulty? Yes, I can't get my stupid door open. You appear to have put your car key in the door lock. Are you aware of that? Yeah. All right, then. Damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it. Would it be possible for you to do this a little more quietly? I can't get the damn key out. That's not surprising. That Baldwin lock on your door uses traditional edge-mounted cylinders, whereas the key for your Volkswagen uses a center cylinder system. Thank you, Sheldon. You're welcome. Point of inquiry, why did you put your car key in the door lock? Why? I'll tell you why. Because today I had an audition. It took me two hours to get there. I waited an hour for my turn. And before I could even start, they told me I looked too Midwest for the part. Too Midwest? What the hell does that even mean? Well, the American Midwest was mostly settled by Scandinavian and Germanic people. So they have a characteristic facial I know what I mean, Sheldon! God! You know, I have been in L.A. for almost two years now, and I haven't gotten a single acting job. I have accomplished nothing. I haven't gotten a raise at work. I haven't even had sex in six months. And just now, when I was walking up those stairs, a fly flew in my mouth, and I ate it! Well, actually, insects are a dietary staple in many cultures. They're almost pure protein. I believe the condensation on your frozen foods weakened the structural integrity of the bag. <laughs> but returning to your key conundrum, perhaps you should call a locksmith and have him open the door for you. I did. He said he'll get here when he gets here. And you're frustrated because he phrased his reply in the form of a meaningless tautology? Well, no! I am frustrated because I am a failure at everything and my breath smells like fly! <laughs> They're there. <laughs> Would you prefer to wait in our apartment? No, Sheldon, I'd rather sit on this freezing cold floor sobbing like a three-year-old. All right, then. For God's sake. Just when I think I've gotten the hang of sarcasm. <laughs> Let's see, Raj was the Kung Pao chicken. I'm the dumplings. Yes, you are. <laughs> Creepy, Howard. 
creepy good or creepy bad? Who was the shrimp with lobster sauce? That would be me. Come. Sit over there. Sit over there. <laughs> Baby wipe. Why do you have no? Don't, don't, don't. <laughs> I'll tell you why. Oh. I had to sanitize my hands because the university replaced the paper towels in the restrooms with hot air blowers. Oh, I thought the blowers were more sanitary. Oh, really? Why? Don't. <laughs> Air blowers are incubators and spewers of bacteria and pestilence. Frankly, it'd be more hygienic if they just had a plague-infested gibbon sneeze my hands dry. Hey guys, I just got the most amazing. Gosh, Ross, do you think you'll ever be able to talk in front of me without being drunk? Okay, well, I, you poor, strange little man. She's so considerate. So what's your news? Remember that little planetary object I spotted beyond the Kuiper belt? Oh yeah, 2008 sub 17 Or as I call it, Planet Bollywood. <laughs> anyway, because of my discovery, People Magazine is naming me one of the 30 under 30 to watch. Right. Congratulations. That's incredible. Excuse me, with 30 what under 30 what to watch what? <laughs> 30 visionaries under 30 years of age to watch as they challenge the preconceptions of the fields. If I had a million guesses, I never would have gotten that. <laughs> it's pretty cool. They've got me in with a guy who's doing something about hunger in Indonesia, and a psychotherapist who's using dolphins to rehabilitate prisoners, and Ellen Page, star of the charming independent film Juno. Oh, I'd so do her. You'd do the dolphins. Do I get an honorable mention for designing the telescope camera mounting bracket you used? Sorry, it's not part of my heartwarming and personal narrative in which a humble boy from New Delhi overcame poverty and prejudice and journeyed to America to reach for the stars. Poverty? Your father's a gynecologist. He drives a Bentley. <laughs> it's a lease. Confused. Was there some sort of peer review committee to determine which scientists would be included? Peer review? It's People magazine. People picked me. What people? But the, 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 the people from People. What? Yeah, but exactly who are these people? What are their credentials? How are they qualified? What makes accidentally noticing a hunk of rock that's been traipsing around the solar system for billions of years more noteworthy than any other scientific accomplishment made by someone under 30? Boy, I bet Ellen Page's friends aren't giving her this kind of crap. <laughs> you proud of yourself? In general, yes. <laughs> Good morning, Leonard. Uh-huh. Yeah, we're going to have to stop by Pottery Barn on the way to work. I bought these Star Wars sheets, but they turned out to be much too stimulating to be compatible with a good night's sleep. I don't like the way Darth Vader stares at me. I'm not going to work. Oh, just because your career's been stagnant for a few years, that's no reason to give up. Sheldon, I was up all night using the new free electron laser for my X-ray diffraction experiment. Did the laser accidentally burn out your retinas? No. Then you can drive. Let's go. Didn't I tell you I'd be working nights and that you'd have to make other arrangements? You did. And? I didn't. <laughs> Let's go. Good night, Sheldon. But how am I going to get to work? Take the bus. But I can't take the bus anymore. They don't have seat belts. And they won't let you lash yourself to the seat with bungee cords. <laughs> tried to lash yourself to the seat with bungee cords? I didn't try. I succeeded. <laughs> For some reason, it alarmed the other passengers, and I was asked to debus. Oh, well, you're a big boy. You'll figure it out. Now, well, talk to me like I'm a child. Now, take me to return my Star Wars sheets. <laughs> Penny? 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 Sheldon, what is it? Leonard's asleep. 
Thanks for the update. No, wait. You have to drive me to work. Yeah, I, I really don't think I do. But I don't drive, and I can't take the bus. Hey, honey, you'll be fine as long as you don't do that bungee cord thing, okay? You did, Penny. <laughs> Didn't you recently state that you and I are friends? Yes, Sheldon, we are friends. Then I hereby invoke what I'm given to understand as an integral part of the implied covenant of friendship. <laughs> the favor. Oh, dear God. I'm sorry, I didn't realize I was interrupting your morning prayers. When you're done, we'll go. So, if any of you are considering going into experimental physics, my door is always open. Once again, I'm sorry that the demonstration didn't quite work out, but now we know what happens when you accidentally spill peach snapple into a helium neon laser. Short answer is don't. And now, to tell you about the theoretical physics department, is Dr. Sheldon Cooper. <laughs> Dr. Cooper. Forget it. <laughs> Excuse me. Sheldon, we both agreed to do this. It's a waste of time. I might as well explain the laws of thermodynamics to a bunch of labradoodles. <laughs> if you don't do this, I won't take you to the comic book store. Hello. <laughs> nice work with the laser, by the way. <clears throat> Looking out at your fresh young faces, I remember when I too was deciding my academic future as a lowly graduate student. Of course, I was 14. <laughs> and I already achieved more than most of you could ever hope to, despite my nine o'clock bedtime. <laughs> now, there may be one or two of you in this room who has what it takes to succeed in theoretical physics, although it's more likely that you will spend your scientific careers teaching fifth graders how to make paper mache volcanoes of baking soda lava. Oh, good God. In short, anyone who told you that you would someday be able to make any significant contribution to physics played a cruel trick on you, a cruel trick indeed. Any questions? Uh, of course not. <laughs> I weep for the future of science. Now, if you'll excuse me, the latest issue of Batman is out. Come, Leonard. Laser demonstration's looking pretty good now, huh? <laughs> Time. All right, Klingons, pencils down. <laughs> okay, I have Pach. Have Got it. it. Pach. Yep. Have it. Puch Pach. Have, have it. it. I have Chor. Got yep. it. Nechmach. Yeah. yeah. And Kreplach. Hold on a second. Kreplach? Yeah. Isn't Klingon? It's Yiddish for meatful dumpling. Well, as it turns out, it's also a Klingon word. Really? Define it. Kreplach, a hearty Klingon. Dumpling. <laughs> Judge's ruling. Hey guys, I need to use your TV. What's wrong with your TV? I don't know, it just died. I'm getting a bunch of static. Did you pay your cable bill? Ugh, you sound just like the cable company. <laughs> All right, so shh, Tyra Banks is about to kick someone off America's Next Top Model. Excuse me, Penny, but no, we're don't tell her. playing Klingon Boggle. Oh. <laughs> What do you mean, all? Oh, like she didn't know we were nerds? <laughs> all right, if you must watch them, muted with closed captions, please. Fine. <laughs> all right, Boggle Warriors. Kapla. <laughs> Look at those women. Gorgeous. Oh, wharf. Nice. Too bad that's a proper noun. <laughs> oh, look, there's the future Mrs. Wallowitz. No, wait, that's the future Mrs. Wallowitz. With her head in the lap of, it, what a coincidence, it's the future Mrs. Wallowitz. Yeah, and they can all move in with you and your mother. <laughs> the current Mrs. Wallowitz. <laughs> is hot. 
Achebehe spelled with a H or a K. Why is that, Mrs. Wallowitz, crying? Oh, that's on Ais. None of the other girls in the house like her. House? What house? They all live in a house together. A house where? I don't know, somewhere in L.A.? Wait a minute. You're telling me that I'm within driving distance of a house filled with aspiring supermodels? Yeah, I guess. And they live together and shower together and... have naked pillow fights? Hey, where, where are you going? To pay my cable bill. All right, pencils down. <clears throat> I have loch, mach, and cherch. Anybody got those? Oh, look, Saturn 3 is on. I don't want to watch Saturn 3. Deep Space Nine is better. How is Deep Space Nine better than Saturn 3? Simple subtraction would tell you it's six better. Compromise, watch Babylon 5. <laughs> In what sense is that a compromise? Well, five is part way between three? Never mind. I'll tell you what, how about we go rock, paper, scissors? Ooh, well, I don't think so. No. Anecdotal evidence suggests that in a game of rock, paper, scissors, players familiar with each other will tie 75 to 80% of the time due to the limited number of outcomes. I suggest rock, paper, scissors, lizard, Spock. <laughs> what? Oh, it's very simple. Look, scissors cuts paper, paper covers rock. Rock crushes lizard, lizard poisons Spock. Spock smashes scissors, scissors decapitates lizard, lizard eats paper, paper disproves Spock, Spock vaporizes rock, and as it always has, rock crushes scissors. Okay, I think I got it. Rock, paper, scissors, lizard, Spock. Hello, boys. Ahoy, matey. Notice the eye patch, did you? It's all part of a technique I've been studying for picking up women. You employ a visual display designed to make yourself distinctive and memorable. Oh, yes, like the male peacock with brilliant plumage, or the running baboon with engorged hindquarters. Or in this case, the bar mitzvah boy with pink eye. Mock me if you will, but it works. You show up at a club in something distinctive, scope out your target, and toss out some negs. What are negs? A neg is a negative compliment that throws a pretty woman off her game. Like, normally I'm not turned on by big teeth, but on you they work. <laughs> I got a whole list of them. Who wants to be my wingman? You're not gonna need a wingman. You're gonna need a paramedic. <laughs> Howard, your scooter's blocking my car. Oh, did you get pink eye again? Step one, she notices the eye patch. <laughs> May I say, Penny, not a lot of women could look as hot as you do with such greasy hair. <laughs> yeah, just move your stupid scooter before I pick it up and throw it in the dumpster. Ow. Penny, hello. Hey, Sheldon. What is shaking? I'm sorry? It's colloquial, a conversation opener. So, do you find the weather satisfying? Are you currently sharing in the triumph of some local sports team? What's wrong with you? You're freaking me out. I'm striking up a casual conversation with you. So, up. Don't do that. All right, but I'm given to understand that when you have something awkward to discuss with someone, it's more palatable to preface it with banal chit-chat. So this wasn't the awkward part? No. Oh, all right. Sup? Oh, good, I used that right. Anyway. You're aware that Leonard has entered into a new romantic relationship, which includes a sexual component? Okay, I'm feeling the awkward now. Wait. 
Her name is Dr. Stephanie Barnett, and she is a highly distinguished surgical resident at Fremont Memorial. Yeah, Leonard told me. Good. What he may have left out is how important this relationship is to me. <laughs> to you? Yes. See, of the handful of women Leonard's been involved with, she's the only one I have ever found tolerable. <laughs> The statement stands for itself. Well, aren't you sweet? Anyway, should you have any interaction with her, it would be most helpful that she not see you as a sexual rival. Yeah, I think she's pretty safe. You say that now, but consider the following scenario. You're sitting in your apartment. It's late. You're alone. Your hypothalamus is swimming in a soup of estrogen, progesterone, and... Suddenly, even Leonard seems like a viable sexual candidate. <laughs> or a uh, uh, hookup, as it's referred to by today's urban youth. Really? Yes. Now, should that happen, I would ask you to find some way to suppress your libido. I could think about you. Fine, whatever works. <laughs> Always nice talking to you, Sheldon. Peace out. Sheldon? Then it must be a tumor. Seriously doubt it. Maybe it's a lingering bacterial infection from all those childhood toilet swirlies. Is that possible? I used to get those all the time. Even in church. You know, if it is from a swirly, there's something I can do. Ready? <clears throat> circle, circle, dot, dot. Now you have a cootie shot. <laughs> I'm going to bed. Okay, I'll be right in. Okay. It's not enough that she mocks me, but that isn't even the correct procedure for a cootie shot. <laughs> do you understand that Stephanie's not here to treat your imaginary ailments? How is it imaginary that I keep hearing an octave above middle C? Is that imaginary? I don't think so. Good night. Leonard, there's one more thing. Under Article 1, Section 3 of our roommate agreement, I'm calling an emergency meeting. No, you're not. Leonard moves the meeting not occur. Is there a second? None heard. The motion fails. I'd like to begin the meeting by congratulating you on the progress in your relationship with Dr. Stephanie. Thank you. And that being said, we have to discuss the implementation of the agreed-upon cohabitation rider, which has been activated now that the two of you are living together. And we're not living together. I beg to disagree. <clears throat> a girlfriend shall be deemed, quote, living with, unquote, Leonard, when she has stayed over for A, ten consecutive nights, or B, more than nine nights in a three-week period, or C, all the weekends of a given month plus three weeknights. <laughs> That's absurd. Yeah. You initialed it, see? L-H, L-H, L-H. Wait, I only initialed it because I never thought it would happen. I, I initialed another clause naming you my sidekick in case I get superpowers. <laughs> yes, you did. No. <laughs> to review, the following provisions are hereby activated in the refrigerator. As opposed to us having two separate shelves and one communal shelf, the three of us now get individual shelves and the door becomes communal. And next. <laughs> Apartment vacuuming shall be increased from two to three times a week to accommodate the increased accumulation of dead skin cells. Third, the bathroom schedule. Now, I'm given to understand women have different needs, so we'll have to discuss that. I'm going to bed. But yeah, but, but, at least take this with you. Look, and have Stephanie initial. Here, 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 here. And here. This states that she does not now, nor does she intend to play a percussive or brass instrument. argument is well established. Superman cleans his uniform by flying into Earth's yellow sun, which incinerates any contaminant matter and leaves the invulnerable Kryptonian fabric unharmed and daisy fresh. <laughs> what if he gets something Kryptonian on it? Like what? I don't know. Kryptonian mustard. Yeah. 
I think we can safely assume that all Kryptonian condiments were destroyed when the planet Krypton exploded. <laughs> or it turned into mustard kryptonite, the only way to destroy a rogue Kryptonian hot dog threatening Earth. <laughs> Raj, please, let's stay serious here. <laughs> Superman's body is Kryptonian, therefore his sweat is Kryptonian. Yeah, what about Kryptonian pit stains? <laughs> Superman doesn't sweat on Earth. Okay, he's invited for dinner in the bottle city of Kandor. He miniaturizes himself, enters the city where he loses his superpowers. Now, before dinner, his host says, who's up for a little Kryptonian tetherball? <laughs> Superman says, sure, works up a sweat, comes back to Earth, his uniform now stained with indestructible Kryptonian perspiration. <laughs> Booyah. Superman would have taken his uniform to a Kandorian dry cleaner before he left the bottle. <laughs> Kandorian dry cleaner? I give up. You can't have a rational argument with this man. Hey, isn't that the guy who won the MacArthur Genius Grant last year? No, not all at once. <laughs> then how? Leonard. Now Raj. Now Sheldon. I didn't get a good look. Can I go again? No. <laughs> it's David Underhill. So what? Yes. So what? His observation of high-energy positrons has provided the first conclusive evidence for the existence of galactic dark matter. Well, I have two words for you. The first is big, the other's whoop. It, it is a big whoop. Made almost all the work you've done since you've been here completely useless. Did not. Did too. Did... Okay, maybe some of it, but... <laughs> Look, the guy was just in the right place at the right time with the right paradigm-shifting reinterpretation of the universe. He got lucky. In more ways than one. He's a very handsome man. <laughs> Doesn't do anything for me. If I was gonna go that way, I'm more of a Zac Efron kind of guy. <laughs> oh, yeah, like you have a shot with Zac Efron. <laughs> Excuse me. Are you Leonard Hofstetter? Uh, yeah? I'm David Underhill. Uh... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Dr. Gablehauser said if I wanted to set something up in the photo multiplier lab that you'd be able to give me a hand. You want to work with me? Well, if you have a little time, yeah. Wow. You, yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, no problem. Um, here's my home number. Here's my cell. Here's my office. Here's my parents' number up in New Jersey. <laughs> they always know how to reach me. So. Okay. Congratulations on the MacArthur grant, by the way. Big fan. Thanks. I'll call you. Okay. Bye-bye. What are you looking at? You've never seen a hypocrite before? All right, that's the last servo. Behold, the mobile omnidirectional neutralization and termination eradicator. Or Monty. <laughs> Featuring one articulated razor sharp killing saw, one polycarbonate grinding and flipping wheel, steel armor plate, exoskeleton top and bottom, and enough horsepower to drive 110 pounds of mechanized death from zero to holy crap in 4.8 seconds. <laughs> Is it wrong to say I love our killer robot? As with my father, I both love and fear it. <laughs> All right, enough chit chat. Let's destroy something. One, two, three. Yeah. Okay, what should be first to taste the wrath of Monty? Maybe we should start small. Okay. Oh, perhaps today is the day we finally find out what's inside the magic eight ball. <laughs> Did it when I was four. It's an icosahedral dye floating in tinted blue water. <laughs> Man, call spoiler alert before you say things like that. How about the toaster oven? What did the toaster oven ever do to you? What did I ever do to Jimmy Mullins in the third grade? He still punched me in the face with my own fists. <laughs> Sorry, you little nerd. You were just in the wrong boys' room at the wrong time. Gentlemen, goggles. Yeah, this is an auspicious moment. Yeah, like Robert Oppenheimer or Neil Armstrong, we need the appropriate words to mark this historic scientific event. How about die, toaster, die? <laughs> That'll do it. <laughs> oh, oh, never <laughs> All right, what's next? No, I think I'm just going to stay in tonight and do laundry.
Mm. Gentlemen, I put it to you. The worst tapioca pudding is better than the best pudding of any other flavor. First off, that is axiomatically wrong because the best pudding is chocolate. <laughs> Secondly, the organic structure of tapioca makes it a jiggling bowl of potential death. It is extracted from the plant. Hey, I'm thinking of growing a mustache. <laughs> No kidding. Fu Manchu, a handlebar pencil. It's extracted from I'm the plant. Sure yeah, you know, George Clooney has one now. Really? I once saw him shopping at Ralph's. He was buying tequila. Oh, you think a guy like that would have some kind of booze lackey? All right, this is cruel. We better let him finish before his head explodes. All right, Sheldon, why is tapioca... Tapioca is extracted from the root of the plant monohot escalenta due to a high concentration of cyanide. It is poisonous in its raw form and lethal if prepared improperly. Feel better now? It is also indigenous to Brazil, as is the cocoa bean from which we get chocolate the best pudding. You promised you wouldn't do that anymore. Hey, Hofstadter. Hey, Kripke. Heard about your weightest anti-proton decay experiment? 20,000 data ones and no statistically significant results. Very impressive. What a jerk. Don't feel bad, Leonard. Negative results are still results. Even 20,000 of them. All right. Please don't cheer me up anymore. Come on, don't let him get to you. It's Kripke. Yeah, he's a ginormous knob. That's why he eats by himself instead of sitting here at the cool table. For shizzle. Hey, it's true, Kripke lacks the basic social skills that we take for granted. But he also controls the new open science grid computer that I need to use to run some simulations of structure formation in the early universe. Well, good luck getting time on it. The only people he lets use it are his friends. Well then, the solution is simple. I shall befriend him. Kripke! Yeah? What would you say to the idea of you and I becoming friends? I would say... I have no interest in becoming your friend. Really? Oh, that seems rather short-sighted, coming from someone who is generally considered altogether unlikable. Why don't you take some time to reconsider? Yeah, I'll do that. Well, I think we're off to a terrific start. Hmm. The problem appears to be unsolvable. Maybe we could run some computer simulations. There are too many variables it would take forever. We've got to be missing something. Let's start again. The movie is playing here at 7.20, here at 7.40, <laughs> here at 8.10, and here at 8.45. All right, these theaters have to be eliminated. Why? They're state-of-the-art, digital projection, 20-channel surround sound. Yes, but they have no icy machines. <laughs> Despite my aggressive letter-writing campaign, I might add. What about the multiplex here? The seats are terrific. They have Twizzlers instead of Red Vines. No amount of lumbar support can compensate for that. Well, it's going to take at least an hour to eat, and I don't see a Sheldon-approved restaurant proximate to a Sheldon-approved theater. We could eat off to the movie. Unacceptable. The delay would result in tomorrow morning's bowel movement occurring at work. Hang on, hang on. There's a 7-Eleven here. We smuggle Slurpees, which are essentially ices, in under our coats after having a pleasant meal either here, here, or here. Wow. I don't see how we missed that. Excuse me, in what universe are Slurpees ices? <laughs> That's how we missed it. Sheldon, would you be prepared on a non-presidential basis to create an emergency ad hoc Slurpee icy equivalency? Oh, Leonard, you know I can't do that. Okay, I guess we only have one option. Yep, I don't see any way around it. Bye, Sheldon. See ya. Little dude. <laughs> They're right, it was the only option.
honey, come on. We were just finding our sound. You found it. It's the sound of a cat being run over by a lawnmower. Well, I'm really very busy. Is there any way that we can put this off until I have more time to prepare? Of course, but uh, you understand my trepidation. What's that about? Not a clue. Can't we just postpone it till this spring? Maybe next summer? This should be fairly easy to deduce. He's holding the phone to his left ear. Ears do not cross hemispheres, so he's using the analytical rather than the emotional side of the brain, suggesting that he has no personal relationship with the caller. <laughs> no, I didn't realize it had been so long. Sure, I guess there's no other choice but to just go ahead and do it. He's referring to an activity he has done before. It's unpleasant and needs to be repeated. This suggests some sort of invasive medical test, like perhaps a <laughs> colonoscopy. <laughs> There any other options? There's not a lot of room. It's going to be uncomfortable. Yes, yes. Yeah, I'm definitely going with colonoscopy. Okay, bye. My mother's coming to visit. How about that? You were right. Oh, that was close. God, I love the smell of paintballs in the morning. Yeah, still funny, Raj. There's no way we can get to the ridge. The chemistry department has us completely cut off. What about the creek bed? Yeah, the pharmacology department controls that, and they're all hopped up on experimental steroids. <laughs> That's it, then we're doomed. Yeah, I think the time has come to acknowledge that we are paying the price for some of us failing to attend my physics department paintball strategy meeting. My mom has spider veins. I had to take her to the laser clinic. <laughs> And I told you I wanted to see a doctor's note. We need a plan. How about Operation Hammer of the Gods? I forget. Which one is Hammer of the Gods? We hide behind the dumpsters in the parking lot and ambush people when they come to pee. <laughs> no, go. No. The dumpsters are deep in astronomy department territory. Uh, no, it shouldn't be a problem. Venus is up during the day. They're probably just all staring at the sky. <laughs> all right, what we need now is a tactical retreat. Did you see the episode of Stargate where they found themselves on a planet with a culture based loosely on Earth, Athens, and Sparta? Not important. <laughs> Leonard, Raj, and I are going to burst out the door and run away. Howard will cover us. Why don't I run away and you cover me? Because you chose your mother's veins over victory. <laughs> All three, one, two, three, go! Ah! I had to take her! It's almost bathing suit weather! <laughs> I'm on your team. Oh, Leslie, thank God. Where's the rest of your squad? Uh, they left me here to die. What about yours? Dead. All of them. Sorry. Don't be. It was friendly fire. <laughs> they just wouldn't listen. Well, I'm surrounded. So I guess there's nothing for us to do but... Wait to be captured or killed. Hmm. That's the worst part. The waiting. All the while knowing that there's a paint pellet out there with your name on it. <laughs> yeah. The big wet ball of death. <laughs> kind of makes you feel more alive, doesn't it? It kind of does. <laughs> I say we make every moment count. I agree. How exactly do we do that? <laughs> Howard, why aren't you covering us? We're getting slaughtered out here! War is hell. <laughs> okay, Raj. Hand me the number six torque screwdriver. Stop! We can't do this. It's not right. Sheldon, you have two choices. Either you let him put a bigger hard drive in the TiVo, or you delete stuff before we go out of town. But once you open the box, you voided the warranty. The warranty is a sacred covenant we've entered into with the manufacturer. He offers to stand by his equipment, and we, in return, agree not to violate the integrity of the internal hardware. This little orange sticker is all that stands between us and anarchy. <laughs> Okay, then we won't touch the hard drive. We'll just erase the first season of Battlestar. 
Fair. We're outlaws. Here you go, Leonard. Is this going to be big enough? Oh, it's perfect. <laughs> for taking daffodils to your unicorn. <laughs> it's just for my notebooks. Thanks, Penny. Oh, I love San Francisco. I wish I was going with you. I understand your envy. This is a can't-miss symposium. There are going to be discussions on bio-organic cellular computer devices, the advancements in multi-threaded task completion, plus a roundtable on the non-equilibrium Green's function approach to the photoionization process in atoms. When I go, I usually just get hammered and ride the cable cars. This conference is kind of a big thing. The keynote address is being delivered by George Smoot. Vision of the universe. It's kind of a funny name, though. Smoot. It's like talking to a chimp. Okay, now that I've been completely insulted, have a good flight? Yeah, I wish. We're not flying. We're taking the train. Oh, cool. Yeah, cool. Seven times as long as flying and cost almost twice as much. Well, then why are you doing it? Well, we had a vote. Three of us voted for airplane, Sheldon voted for train, so we're taking the train. <laughs> Say it like that, Leonard. Say it like, we're taking the train. Okay, it's done. Look, guys, for the future, I don't mind killing the big spiders, but you have to at least try with the little ones. Penny, please. We're facing a far more serious problem than stray arachnids. Sheldon, it's not that bad. It's not bad. It's horrible. I mean, you hear stories about this sort of thing, but you never think it'll happen to you. So they steamed your dumplings. Get over it. <laughs> New topic, please. All right, Penny. Let me take this opportunity to point out that you are looking particularly ravishing today. Not with a thousand condoms, Howard. So there is a number. Okay, new topic, please. Hey, did you hear the people upstairs in 5A are moving out? No, just, 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 what? Just, just, just. The people upstairs are moving out. No! The horror. <laughs> Why would you just say something like that? No, 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 no. How else was I supposed to say it? Just slowly, like putting a new fish in a tank. You don't just drop it in. You let the bag sit in the water a while. The horror. Sheldon, I'm sure it's gonna be fine. No, it's not going to be fine. Change is never fine. They say it is, but it's not. Okay, honey, did you even know the people that are moving out? I never met them. That's what made them perfect. There were no awkward hellos in the halls. There's no clickety clacking of high heel shoes on hardwood floors. They may as well have been a family of cats just jumping around from drape to drape. <laughs> Without that annoying ammonia urine smell. Well, I'm sure the new people will be just as quiet. You can't know that. How can you possibly know that? You're right, I can't. You know what, anyone can rent that apartment now. An opera singer, the cast of Stomp. Yeah, a tap dancing pirate with a wooden leg. Why are you making it worse? I tried making it better. He wouldn't go for it. You're right. That's a great idea. What? I'll take the apartment upstairs. I can finally get away from my mother and we can all spend some more time together. If you catch my drift. <laughs> The horror. <laughs> 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 Problem? This is Thai food. Here we go. <laughs> We don't have Thai food on Thursday. We have pizza on Thursday. Yes, but we all agreed that the third Thursday of every month would be anything can happen Thursday. Well, apparently the news didn't reach my digestive system, which when startled has its own version of anything can happen Thursday. Come on, the whole idea behind anything can happen Thursday is to get out of this rut we've been in lately. Rut? I think you mean consistency. And if we're going to abandon that, then why even call it Thursday? Let's call it Quanko Day and divide it into 29 hours of 17 minutes apiece and celebrate it by sacrificing a goat to the mighty god Ra. I could go for some goat. Sheldon, we agreed we'd do something different tonight. All right. 
let's go to the comic book store. We went to the comic book store last night. Yeah, last night was Wednesday. Wednesday is comic book night. Tonight, we'll be going on Thursday because it's anything can happen Thursday. <laughs> Why do you think outside, but pressed right up against the box, Sheldon? So what are we gonna do tonight? Well, if I may proffer a suggestion, in bars all across this great nation of ours, Thursday night is ladies' night. <laughs> Which means, as the evening progresses, we will get better looking, courtesy of 99-cent margaritas and two-for-one jello shots. Come on, Howard. The odds of us picking up girls in a bar are practically zero. Oh, uh, really? Are you familiar with the Drake equation? The one that estimates the odds of making contact with extraterrestrials by calculating the product of an increasingly restrictive series of fractional values, such as those stars with planets, and those planets likely to develop life. N equals R times FP times NE times FL times FI times FC times L. You can modify it to calculate our chances of having sex by changing the formula to use the number of single women in Los Angeles, the number of those who might find us attractive, and what I call the Wallowitz coefficient. The Wallowitz coefficient? Neediness times dress size squared. In crunching the numbers, I come up with a conservative 5,812 potential sex partners within a 40-mile radius. You're joking. I'm a horny engineer, Leonard. I never joke about math or sex. <laughs> well, what are you waiting for? Let's bounce, bitches! <laughs> oh, you're right. It's anything can happen Thursday. Let's hit the clubs and meet hot women. Here we go. Lock up your daughters. We're gonna hit it and quit it. <laughs> Or we could finish eating and go to the comic book store. <laughs> also a good plan. <laughs> All right, but next anything could happen Thursday, we're definitely going to a bar. Oh, absolutely. You heard that, ladies night, ladies? We're eventually coming for you. <laughs> Fascinating. <laughs> okay, are you from the Star Wars universe? Yes. Were you in the original trilogy? Yes. Is there a picture of you in my wallet wearing a metal bikini? God, I hope not. Well, no, I'm not Princess Leia. Uh, okay, okay, my turn. Um, are you in all six Star Wars movies? Yes. Interesting. Are you a droid? Yes. Do you kind of look like a shiny Sheldon? <laughs> yes. <laughs> C-3PO. You got it. <laughs> That's preposterous. I do not resemble C-3PO. Don't get me wrong, I'm flattered. I just don't see it. <laughs> Leslie Winkle. <clears throat> You've reached friends with benefits. <laughs> For a booty call, press one now. <laughs> what exactly does that expression mean, friends with benefits? Does he provide her with health insurance? <laughs> No. Look, uh, imagine you maintained a friendship with someone you had sex with, but you were free to date whoever you wanted. I'm sorry, I can't imagine any of that. <laughs> All right, back to the game. I believe it's my turn. You may begin your questions whenever you're ready. Are you Spock? <laughs> I don't like this game. <laughs> so, where were we? Aren't you leaving for your booty call? No, it was something else. Why does everything have to be about sex with you? Come on. <laughs> Whose turn is it? We're up to you. Great, just start. Okay, let's see. Are you from a TV series? She dumped me! <laughs> I bet he's someone from Babylon 5. We're never gonna get it. <laughs> <laughs> 